Do you want to tank? Do you want to fight? Do you want a class that'll instill fright? Take up some plate and keep the goblins in sight because you want to make sure they eat this paladin SMITE! Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, we're going to be talking about the paladin. You know that guy that wears heavy armor, carries a really big stick, and screams justice when he hits people? Yeah, that guy. So, if you're new to Mortal Online, you might not realize paladin isn't actually a class. There's no classes in the game. What I've done is I've created a couple beginner-friendly guides that have familiar archetypes for their names. So like you've got ranger, barbarian, and in this case, paladin. So if you're familiar with what a paladin should be, you'll kind of understand how this class plays, right? What I'm gonna do with this build guide for this video is I'm gonna talk about the stats, why I built the character the way I did, the action skills, the professions, how you should be kind of looking to play the class and then i'm going to go through the gear loadout like what like a typical loadout can play like and then i'm going to do the tier list and the tier list is every little detail about the class these videos typically go a little bit long so if you are interested in just skipping to the end and looking at the tier list i would suggest you know taking a peek if it's something that you think you might be interested in come back here and listen to me talk all of my beginner build guides anything that has a familiar name like paladin or ranger they're all designed to transition into a veteran build guide so you set yourself up for success if this is something that you do enjoy and you do want to kind of continue with because this in this game you are limited to one character for now and soon to be two characters this character does have a progression path for a uh, a more advanced build down the line now if you're interested in that all of my build guides can be found on mo2builds.com. Those aren't only from me, they're from all the other creators within the community as well. There's a bunch of other tools on there. There's crafting calculators, there's maps, there's uh, spreadsheets for taming. There's a whole bunch of different things available there. So go ahead and check out mo2builds.com after the video is done if you're looking to uh, get better with Mortal. And it seems like you are because you're watching a build guide video. So now, you know, pitch done. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of relax. I'm going to talk about the class, the character, and what it's like. So this character is actually coming into existence kind of recently because they just got a big buff to a lot of different human subclasses. And when I say subclass, I mean they have a bunch of different races. If you look over here, these races are like, think of them as tribes. Right, so the Sedoans and the Calards just got big buffs. They used to have uh, a very small amount of attribute points to play with. Now they're they're up there. They're not quite as high as Tindremic, um, but they are they are pretty damn good. So they're very viable now. I have it at age 27, and the height is maxed out, and the weight is at stout. When you're making your character, if it's your first character things that you really care about is you want your age your height and your weight to be accurate because those are really hard to change once you actually get into the match your stats actually level up as you play the game so you get additional stats and strength when you go and hit things and you get dexterity when you move around so all this stuff will shift as you play but you have a finite number and what you want to do is use your modifiers or you can lock and minus stats as you play to kind of change your build. What you want is to have the build like this. Now, there are ways to go above this, right? You see dexterity is at 90, but it caps out at 95. The reason I designed it this way is because you get free action skills in certain things based off of 10 points in each stat. I know that's a little bit confusing, but every 10 points in strength gives you free bonus points you see on the right here in things that would be associated with strength so this guy's really strong so he has plus 11 to the aggressive stance he's got plus nine to armor training and stuff and the reason that some are higher than others is because they either have a clade associated with them like ecumenical has 20 free stats from this talent point if you're coming from a different game uh and then uh other things have bonuses from more than one type of thing as well. So these stats are designed to be hitting those even numbers, those even 10s, 110, 90, 90, 91, 14, right? This one, we don't have any, this is our dumb stat. We don't have any points in psych, but because of that, we get a bunch of free action skills. And because of that, we can fit a lot into this build this build is what's considered a hybrid it's somebody who can wear heavier armor 
do decent in melee combat and also do decent magic, but not really both, if that makes sense. You're, you're not going to be the best at both. You're going to be pretty good at both. Okay, so action skills. I think a paladin should be using a club. It's just, uh, or in this game, it's, a, it's called clubs, but it's really a hammer. Um, and the reason that I'm saying that is because hammers are becoming more and more meta in this game. They do a lot of blunt damage, and it's very hard for heavy armor users to stack blunt protection. They can basically throw iron fur in, it's really heavy, but it is hard to stack that protection. And blunt allows you to hit through shields, and I'll explain how shields work here in a little bit, and specifically tower shields. And you're going to be also abusing the tower shield to kind of uh, min-max your character. Your playstyle is really, really flexible, and when it works, it works really, really well, and it's really, really fun. Um, we'll talk more about positives and negatives here in a little bit, but you'll have 31 taming so that you can tame any horse on your first try. If you ever need additional points, I would pull them from this first. Uh, controlled riding is at 71 and mounted combat is at 70. Now, because this is a hybrid character, mounted combat applies to melee combat on horseback. You could also do mounted majory, but uh, my hesitation for doing that is your mana pool is very low. This character is designed to be a single mana bar character where your regeneration, it does exist because you're human. With your shield off, it's gonna be around 50% and with your shield on, it's only 20%. It's as low as it can be for mana regeneration. So your mana is not gonna be coming back very quickly. And another thing that most new players would never know is your mana regeneration is actually based off of your total mana pool. So if your total mana pool is 111, which is pretty small, and the biggest pool you could ever have if you're playing a fat mage would be like 270, 266, 270-ish, uh, their mana comes back much faster because it's based on the total pool size. This being 111, it's pretty small. The reason that we have 111 and it's still useful is healing in this game the lesser heals are extremely cheap they cost between two and five mana and they heal around 20 hp per heal and you can just pump them out you can pump them out all day long you do have enough mana to do two to maybe three big damage spells but you're really going to tap yourself fast doing mana spells it is nice to have that in your back pocket if you need to throw a fulmination out, you need to blow up somebody's horse as they, as they ride away, you need that little bit of ranged damage that is very nice, that is a tool in your toolkit, but really what it is is you're, you're a flexible healer in this role. You're a paladin, you're a dude with a light, right? You can, you can heal people a lot. For professions, my recommendations here is to go, you can basically do a whole bunch of stuff. You're gonna be making armor, you're gonna be making shields, and you're gonna be making one weapon, probably blunt weapon if it was me, I would go with the hammer. You'll be able to also have steel and petrology and all these different uh, professions here, animal materials, armor crafting everything in here is about crafting except for mamelia mamelia is just going to make it so that you can actually use a max level horse without having to expend additional points into creature control so you kind of get even more action points by having mamelia almost every build in the game should have that it also makes you hit horses harder which is very very important but you've got armor training crafting you've got shield crafting you've got weapon crafting not only is it it's easier now than it used to be but crafting a, a good hammer the way that you like it can be difficult to find somebody to craft that so you don't have to worry about that like this crafting a good shield that applies to the to the weight that you want again can be difficult to find somebody now you don't have to worry about it and then with armor crafting because there's two real ways to play this character and i'll talk about the gear actually right here sorry i had that a little bit messed up but we've got the gear right here the gear with this loadout is a little bit on the higher end right uh, if you look at panzer scales panzer scales aren't very cheap they're kind of expensive plate scales are you know they're mid-tier uh, steel is a little bit expensive if you're a newer player but this type of loadout is designed to toggle the tower shield the tower shield 
can be instantly equipped or unequipped and it covers for the heavy tower shield it covers your entire body from on the on the back side so if you face away from the enemy you can tank hits with the tower shield and the way that the tower shield mitigates damage is it takes into account the shields protections and also the chest piece protection and so we're using some light in well it's all medium or or heavy armor heavy armor for the head medium armor for the legs and and, and everything else and we're combining the stats of this torso which is geared to be extremely blunt protective with this shield here which has really good protections on everything except for blunt and if you're playing the character right and you're toggling the shield on you can turn your back to the enemy and free cast heals basically and pump heals into yourself or into a teammate and you can kite with this and you can you can even use this in melee combat if you want to get into the front line and have a big tower shield that soaks damage for you it's about to get nerfed when tower shields get hit they're about to consume stamina so you can potentially stam yourself out if you're just getting hit in the shield constantly uh, because it is a little bit broken it's pretty overpowered right now uh, but you can see the material cost here on the right it's not the cheapest thing in the world but it's kind of designed to be flexible the ironwood is going to be expensive if you don't want to use ironwood you can always take these materials and go a tier or two down and the build is still totally viable this is just kind of what i would use on my day to day if you decided that you did not want to play the sword and board guy you did not want to have the shield on your back maybe you want to use a two-handed hammer or you just want to run around with a one-handed hammer and have higher mana regeneration that's totally fine you can just go full steel like this guy on the right just put on entire an entire set of steel armor look badass be that like heavy armor paladin but my recommendation here is if you play with this type of gear and you toggle your shield if your shield is in your backpack it's not on your body you're getting 50 percent mana regeneration and when you put the shield on your body your mana regeneration goes down to 20 percent because your mana regeneration is based off of how much armor you're wearing and humans actually have a clade right here called cleric which allows them to have additional mana regeneration with armor which is why they're the best for this type of character for a hybrid like this they are the most flexible they have the most points to kind of play with so human is very good for paladin here i know it's a little bit boring you're you're playing a fantasy game a lot of people don't like playing the human because it's it's the white bread of the of the fantasy world but trust me human is very very good for this the clades for when you're doing your clade priority, you really want to prioritize just getting your stats. Don't worry so much about max stats until later. The, the build is designed to be at these 110s and hitting these max extra stats will be great. Uh, but there are very important skills like your war cries and, and mind shield or whatever this one's called. This will wipe off an enemy debuff and clean you out and make you 20% resistant to magic for 10 seconds. This one does that same thing basically for all of your allies. This one gives you 45 primary points in riding skills, right? This one gives you 20 points in ecumenical. There's a lot of really important stuff here. This one is crazy. Striker gives you plus three additional damage to every swing. Uh, with your melee weapon so that really spikes up your damage and if you're in haven i'd recommend watching my haven speedrun guide and for this guy specifically i would beeline straight to striker because that's going to make your uh your killing of of mobs much much faster for stats your damage bonus is respectable it's not super high the maximum that you could really have is 32 33 percent really on a thursar it's 26 it ain't bad it's not it's not bad you're hitting better than most alvarin uh, hybrids you have 181 health. A typical foot fighter has around 200 to 220. So you're a little bit low on health, but you're a hybrid, right? You got to give up some stats. And when you're doing your jewelry priority for your rings, try to get some base con, right? Base con, base dex. That's going to kind of flesh out your build a little bit more, bring you into, uh, you know, up into line with a lot of other base stats for other characters that aren't hybrids. And then if you can find raw dex and or I'm sorry, raw intellect and raw strength. That will help you out a lot. On the neck, you're just looking for as many action skills as you can get that 
that you want and then free armor weight will also help you be able to wear heavier armor that's never a bad thing on this character right your combat speed's 419 it's, it's baseline for most foot fighters at this point to be around 420 if you're not an alvaran alvarans are at 440 you can play a dex human like a cure right human which might be viable for this if you wanted to be like a speedy boy we're going to have a build guide that comes out for that soon their speed can get all the way up to 435 which is damn near at alvaran speeds which is really really nice but that's not this build this build is more about being tanky it's the one mana bar uh, extremely flexible from a utility perspective it's this is just a really cool really fun build so we're going to jump into the tier list now just as a reminder, if you guys do enjoy this content, if you want to become a member, you get access to these videos early. And if you don't want to do that and you want to throw a super chat my way, it's very much appreciated. Obviously not required, but it helps me keep the wife aggro at a minimum and allows me to make more and more of these videos. So if it was helpful for you, um, I do appreciate that. Anyways, I typically leave PVP towards the end. Uh, so we'll talk about PVE right gone are the days where you could just be a mounted archer for free basically and do almost all the pve in the game today you need to go dungeon delving you need to clear out you need to be able to fight multiple npcs for the uh the bandit spawns and the outlaw spawns people farm those quite a bit uh going deep into the necro dungeon can be a little bit dangerous and also profitable satyrs also hit uh, they actually nerf Seder. Seder's are real easy now. But uh, from a PvE perspective, you're very flexible. You could put on super heavy armor. Um, so you could just pull out a two-handed maul and just clap stuff. Uh, you're gonna, your survivability is going to be really good. And then your uptime is really, really good because when you take some damage, you just put the weapon away as soon as the, the mob is dead. And you can top yourself back up with mana and with your heals real, really fast. Um, so PvE, I'd say it's pretty good. The You're not going to have the easiest time dealing with certain mobs that have really high health pools, like Campadons and things like that. Campadons, when you pull them, it pulls the pack. They have like herd mentality. Uh, so you really need a mounted archer or somebody with a bow. Uh, Terror birds might give you some problems because you're fighting those in melee. You often pull more than one. Uh, so having a bow or some way that you can both pull, you could use outburst, but but pull and also put substantial damage in before the mob connects with you is valuable and you don't really have that. So I'd put it in D tier. It's very flexible. It's good if you're going to go out with like a group or something like that. It would probably be like B tier if you were going out with your group. But just overall playing PvE, um, it's, it's just below middle of the road, not not in a terrible spot for solo gameplay like you're literally going to be playing this by yourself this is this is not bad this if you're going to be out there by yourself you can react to a lot of different situations coming your way and we'll talk about 1v1s and 1vx's and stuff like that soon but there's not many things in the game you can't really just like go give a stab at you might not be hyper successful but you could go out and do quite a bit 1v1s and then dueling right i often confuse these while i'm talking about them dueling we'll start with that dueling is a much more honorable honorable mode of fighting a dueling typically does not allow magic it's in town generally or it's under near guards or it's you're not competing for loot it's not a uh it's not you're trying to kill them by any means necessary and 1v1 is you're trying to fight to the death this is you versus any other build in the game how are you going to stack up for dueling this is not the worst right you can still wear decent armor you can put on dueling armor you can still wield decent weapons uh the tower shield and the one-handed uh, mace pretty damn good in a duel most people frown on you using tower shields in a duel but you could um but it's nothing compared to like a thursar especially a, a third star with a stick and throw up or something like that. Um, Alvarens have a lot of cool jumping feints and morphs that they can do. This guy's pretty big. He's pretty slow. Uh, his animations are easy to read. Um, so this guy's going to be just below the middle of the pack on this guy. He's not terrible, but he's, he's below average. 1v1s, though, 
let's see. So if we think about this, this character has decent magic. It has decent melee. This character is really going to struggle at killing horses. So fighting any mounted build is going to be a real challenge for this character because you don't have the, the mana pool to take down a horse. This character is going to really, really shine when we get to the team fight stuff, but killing enemy horses, which is often step one in anything that starts out in the open world, you're really going to struggle to do that because a horse has, you know, 200 HP at higher levels. Your mana pool, your, your fulminates do 40, 50 damage. So you need to do four. You can only really do three. So you're going to be completely mana tapped by the time the person's horse dies. If you can land sequential kills without them healing it and kill it. And then now you're a handicapped foot fighter that has to fight somebody who might not be handicapped. So I'd say that it's probably right in the middle of the road. If they're not mounted, let's say you're in a dungeon or something like that, or you're just in the graveyard and the fight, fight starts on foot, you have a you have a decent chance. You have a pretty good chance. Uh, you have a lot more flexibility in the build. If they give you breathing room at all, you can start healing. You can zone people out with spells. You have magic reflect to kind of fight against mages. So if you keep your buffs up, um, yeah. There's other ways to help with your mana pool. You could run mana pots they're just really expensive and rare they might be more commonplace than they used to be i know they are but they're still expensive and rare um, and not really reliable if you're a new player so middle of the road um 1vx this is this is pretty bad for 1vx i'm gonna be honest we'll put it in f tier um, for the main reason i talked about before is killing horses Right? It's very commonplace that you're going to have to kill a horse or you're going to have to expend a lot of mana to kill somebody. Right, You could pump out a lot of damage with the one mana bar you have, but when it's gone, it's basically gone for good. So then you have to rely on your melee skills to secure any other kills. Your character is slow. You're running slower than Al Alvarens, which are the most popular builds in the game. So gap closing on an Alvaren's not going to happen. So if you are you have a lot of what ifs, that if they happen, you're not going to win that fight. If they're mounted, if they're a mounted build, they're, you're not going to win the fight. If one of them is an Alvaren, you're not going to win that fight. If one of them is a true mage, like a true dex mage, you're not going to win that fight. There's a lot of uh, things that are just like automatic losses almost, right? Unless they're absolutely terrible, it's going to be really, really hard for you to secure kills like that. One thing that you can kind of do if this is something that you're serious about is dump more points into Ecumenical. So if you look at the stats here, you'll see Ecumenical's at 62. If you can find 40 points in your build, maybe you wanna pull points out of controlled writing and mounted combat and dump 40 more points into Ecumenical, you can get that to 100. You can unlock Earthquake and you can use Earthquake, which is extremely expensive from a mana perspective, to dismount people. If you miss it, you waste the mana anyways, you have to carry around extra reagents. Um, so you're going to use a huge chunk of your mana, but it does hit super hard. It hits like a truck and it knocks people off of horses. And then you can run over and typically get one to two melee hits in before they're able to remount and ride away. Sometimes that's enough to kill people. So you can go kind of glass cannony, like roll the dice all in to help deal with the fact that you can't really kill horses um, so that is one option you could go with but either way in a 1vx scenario you're gonna get clapped up a lot of times this isn't really something that you would roll around with now that i'm thinking about it i'm gonna bump solo down a little bit because because of all the reasons i just talked about offense how are the offensive capabilities of this. If you have a full mana bar and you can land your spells, which isn't that hard, you could do, you could really spam a lot of outbursts to get some decent damage. Um, and you have a hammer that does go through most defenses, the most popular types of defense. It's, it's middle of the road here. Again, it has a lower than maximum 
um, Thursar level melee damage bonus. It's but it has like 25, 26 percent. It's it's a respectable amount, but it's nothing to write home about. Like you're not a Thursar that's gonna clap people up and one tap people with the with a two handed maul. Defense though, oh my gosh, this is really good for defense. You could wear full steel. You can wear like heavier armors, not like the heaviest. You're not gonna go meta in game Agmium, but you could probably mix in some Chronite. Um, the tower shield, being able to toggle that is extremely powerful defense. And then you have breathing room. Uh, anytime you get breathing room, you can just pump heals and get a ton of healing out on yourself. Uh, one thing you can do is put yourself into a corner. You'll see some videos on my channel. If you just go into a corner with a tower shield on your back, it is extremely hard for somebody to kill you. Couple that with you wearing heavier armor than most people, like it's gonna be hard to knock you out. You can be a, a prick about keeping yourself alive. You might not kill things, but your your defense is pretty damn solid. Team fights. This is S tier for team fights. If you take this build a step further and go the more veteran route and start building it into a death knight, and you get things like all surge that you can mix in, phenomenal. Your war cries as a human are or the war cry that reduces incoming magic damage is very meta right now. People use it to defend their team against all surge spam, which is a, a necromancy ability that does big like cone of cone cone of cone of damage, right? So this is very, very good for that. Being able to be an off healer is really, really good. I would play this slightly behind the front line. You're not gonna be diving the opponents with this, but this is a really, really good class to peel for your teammates with. If your mages get dove on, you can punish with your hammer. And if the front line is starting to get hit because they're not diving, now you're a healer. And then, you can kind of flex to whatever the fight needs. This, when it works, is one of the most fun ways you can play the game. When you get value from your entire kit, it's great. The downside is if you can't get value from your kit, if you're, if you're in a fight with a foot fighter who's faster than you and he's putting pressure on you, you can't make space on this character and be able to heal yourself because casting takes a long time. You have to sheath your weapon, which takes two seconds, cast, which takes two seconds, and then unsheath your weapon, and that's all to get a 20 HP heal out. So it takes a long time to be able to get casting out. So there's a pretty decent chance that a lot of fights won't let you get value from your whole kit. You really need to know your positioning, know what the play style for your character is, and be in the right spot and be taking the fights that make sense for you. So in that same in that same vein for skill cap, I'll say that this is pretty low. When I'm talking about skill cap, I'm thinking about how hard it is to play the character effectively. S would be like it's super easy to get value from, and F would be like it's impossible. This is pretty low. This character encompasses magic and melee two of the biggest aspects of the game and it goes pretty hard on both so you need to learn how to be a good foot fighter and you need to learn how to use magic effectively both of which have their own learning curves associated with them so it is hard to get into this class you're not going to be rocking and rolling from day one money how hard is it to keep this build online and going if you're running steel and stuff like that, it can be somewhat expensive, especially if you're new. You also have to carry a spell book. You have to get a spell book that has certain spells, like Earthquake can be very expensive if you go that route. Um, but you're not doing like a full on spell book. You basically need an ecumenical spell book, which is gonna cost you a couple hundred gold probably. And then you have to carry the reagents around. Then you have to carry the steel weapon around or the, or the hammer, I guess, whatever hammer you're running and then steel armor and the tower shield. Like there's a lot that goes into just before you step out the gate on this character. So it can be expensive to run a character like this. Utility, like absolute S tier. Um, the only thing that would have, yeah, we'll go A tier because there are the only thing that would have more utility than you would be like a, a full fledged mage that can do all different types of magic. I'd also put death knight 
up in S plus because Necro has so much utility. And once you get Necro unlocked, you know, it really changes the game. Uptime, how much uptime do you have on your build? So this is pretty low on uptime. I'm gonna give this an E. And what I mean by uptime is how often you're getting value from your build. I talked about it a little bit already, but basically if you're in a foot fight, you're getting value from your foot fighting skills. And this character leans to the foot fighting side, but your all of your casting stuff, all of your mage side is dead stats. You're getting zero value anytime you're foot fighting. And the same thing when you're casting, you're getting zero value from your foot fighting side. So it's, it's about 75, 25 on this character, 75% foot fighter, 25% mage. So depending on what you're doing, another chunk of your build is just not working if if that makes a lot of sense okay crafting um if you go my route i'd say it's below average crafting it's kind of nuanced it's really opinion based you can basically do whatever you want with your professions but when you're new and you're building this character and especially if you don't have a solid guild backing you up yet it can be hard to build a gear set that works for your weight, get a good shield, get a good hammer, get your spell, get all that stuff sorted so that you can step out the gate. So if you run the ones I suggested, you can do all that. It just takes a lot of resources and a lot of time and a lot of like crafting at the bench to level up your skills. Um, so it does take a long time and a lot of reading and a lot of you know, holding the left click button on the craft button to get it going, but it's a human, so I can't put it anything below E really, because you you can get extra skills. You do get extra skills in all of your profession skills. It does have a decent intelligence, um, so you have a lot more points to work with. You can fit quite a bit in. I mean, you, you're an armor crafter, a weapon crafter, and a shield crafter, and you have the lores to back those up. Like, that's kind of nuts how much you can fit in there which is really, really nice. PVP, um, this is B tier, right? B tier because you have so many other things that I would say are above it. You know, Ogmir Foot Fighter is above it. Death Knight is above it. Um, really set up Dex Mages are probably above it. Um, but this is flexible as hell. And there should be another category in here that I think I'll add to future videos called fun. I think I did it at one point, but how fun is this class to play? In fact, I'll, I'll just add it, right? How fun is this class to play? This class is super fun. This is, this is S tier for sure. This, this class is so fun to play. And then overall, like, where do I think the build is? It's tough, man. I mean, if you look at this, how it stacks up it's all over the board and it really depends on what you want if you're if you're the type of person that plays in a team and, and wants to put the team first boom this is a rock star build if you're the type of person that plays solo you're really going to struggle it's not going to be something that you really uh, can jump into easily as a new player and get the ball rolling so uh, i would say that overall this is like between b and a probably like a b plus We'll put it like up here, like on the line here. It's like a B plus, A minus. Uh, it's you know, and I and I'm rating that pretty favor favorably because it's fucking fun to play it, man. It, it's really a really good, fun build to play. So again, if this is something that you're interested in, check out mo2builds.com. Uh, and if it is helpful for you guys, you did enjoy this. It was uh, useful in any way. If you toss me a super thanks, I do appreciate it. If not, not a problem. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Have a good rest of your day.